Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another episode of The Hub, presented by Capital Workspaces in Bethesda, Maryland. Today, we are discussing International Women's History Month. I am joined by Ms. Joanna Gamala. Hi. And Milan Shannon. Hello. (laughs) So we're here to talk about um, discussing women in the business and corporate world. We're going to be discussing challenges in the workplace, the gender pay gap, um, to lack of representation in leadership positions. So um, Women's History Month actually started what Jimmy Carter started as a week, and then it was pushed forward to become a month. So that's very interesting. So Milan, what did you want to start off with for Women's History Month? Yeah, so um, in honor of Women's History Month, we're going to be discussing the importance of women in business and why it's important to create more inclusivity in the workplace. We're going to talk about some of the challenges that women face um, in the workplace, such as like the gender pay gap, lack of representation and leadership, and just some of the hurdles that women have to go through to receive equality and respect in the workplace, but also we'll be just talking about the progress as well and our own experiences um, as women in business. Okay. As I I looked it up, I I see that 42% of businesses in the U.S. are by women. Women employ over 9.4 million workers, and they are 3% points more likely to own a business small business than a man. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So what, um, either you or Joanna, what challenges have you faced as women in the workplace? What would you like to share any of that in any business, in in your business career? Um, Yeah, I have to think about that. I would say, yeah, I definitely notice um, just the need to really work harder and prove, I guess, a certain level of competency. I've been fortunate to have worked in real, um, a lot of women-owned businesses or women-centered businesses. So I think I've had a distinct experience in, in my more recent career. And then also at Capital Workspaces, there's a lot of other women working in the space that I work with. So I think I've had a more um, fortunate experience where there's more kind of inclusivity, equality, and then also as an entrepreneur, And working with women business partners or working with myself, um, a lot of my work has just been kind of centered around that comfort and um, mutual respect and understanding. So, Okay. May I ask, were the prior businesses that you were in, were they in the health industry or they were in the health Um, industry? So one of them was co-working and it was like a women-centered and women-run co-working space and it was all women working there actually. Wow. And that was a very unique experience. And then the other um, I'm referencing was a nonprofit that was a largely team of women and was women um, founded. Okay. Uh, like a food access health uh, nonprofit. And then also worked in like a small business that was women owned. Um, and that was like a kind of cultural center uh, centered around creating um, spaces for artisans in African diaspora. It's like a, an arts hub located in the Anacostia Arts Center. Um, so yeah, a lot of women owners that I've gotten to like witness and somewhat be mentored by as well. Okay. Um, so Joanna, you what um, challenges have you ever experienced in um, your area of business working in the workplace? Well, from uh, personal and just observing in the workplace, I've uh, personally I've experienced pressure of you know doing more work, working you know double working than okay. my male peers. Okay. And uh, as we were talking earlier, I gave you an example of my HR class where my professor was talking about how women feel pressured to do more than what their male peers are doing. And before that, I never really, I never really paid attention to it until that class. And then I noticed that where I was working before, like men were less pressured 
Okay. I can say less stressed of getting things done. And somehow it will always be their women peer finishing the work. Because, you know, women always want to get it done. Do you do you feel like you were, a, you were, did you feel appreciated in what you brought to the table with your expertise, your education, what you brought to any project or just the business office in particular? Um. I'll never say the name of the company, but <laughs> <laughs> let's just say prior to me leaving, I would spend about 10 to 20 minutes in my car crying before I get in the really? office. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. So I don't think I was appreciated for the job or the work that I was doing. Okay. So let me let me ask this. And um, all of us women, I don't take, we don't take this personally. <laughs> when I say feel... Were you appreciated? Did they ever say that they appreciated you? Were you ever um, bonuses or I'm not sure what appreciation would look like to you, but did they ever, was it ever expressed their appreciation for you? So um, it was expressed by words, but you know, sometimes people say things, but their actions don't go with what they're saying. Okay. You know, it's, you can tell me that I'm doing a good job, but your actions towards me are telling me something else. Okay. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. I know, and I have, um, I have worked since 14, started fast food, and throughout the years raising two children. I've owned a cleaning franchise. I've cleaned homes. I've always mm-hmm. been a go-getter. My mother graduated at the top of her business class. I always had that drive. And, of course, our family didn't have a lot of money, so I'm like, if I got to go get it, whatever I want, I have to go out here and make the money to go get it. So I have never honestly looked at it as women in business, as specifically under that statement. I just looked at Michelle. You got to work. You got to do this. You got to, if you want anything, go get it. So this just kind of brings, if it makes a little any sense, a collective thought as a woman looking at women in business altogether. So um, on the management scale, looking to, I guess, climb the ladder when you, everybody wants to be promoted. I always looked at it as myself. What um, what did I need to improve in myself to climb the ladder? I never looked at it as a me, as a woman, like I was being held back as a woman. And I've worked for, you know, big companies in retail, Hugo Boss and Brooks Brothers and Target. I've worked for all those companies, but I never look at it um, at that way. So I'm, hopefully I can gain um, a different perspective about what we're talking about. So I know that recently there has been major progress in recent years in business and women in business, podcasts, authors, small business owners. Oh my God. Um, in Spring Valley with um, Capital Workspaces, all of the women that deal with, ch- the businesses that deal with children are women owned. Mm-hmm. Um, more Learning, Chanel Blaylock. She's a speech pathologist. Most of the ones that we've known here are um, women owned. Um, Karen here uh, with her writing business. Um, so what is, actually, do we know the percentage of women? Is it a greater number of women here within capital workspaces that have that, that utilize the space or would it be men? So I wouldn't have an exact number, but yes. Yeah. I I do but I believe that majority of members here, majority of uh business owned uh, working in capital workspaces are owned by women here. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. Both um both Bethesda and DC. Okay. Yeah. I, um, being in management where I am, my upper management, I do work for Goodwill. And for the first time in my life, all three of my upper managers are men. And I do bring up a um, per different perspective by being a woman. And I'm, I'm seeing that there's not much difference in the way that we handle things, as, but as far as attacking a situation or confronting a situation head on, our differences are um, the lag in time of addressing certain situations. That's the major difference that I see in the men um, and women situations here in management um, with the company. So um, what barriers do you think that there are for women trying to become entrepreneurs or climb the ladder in management in the company? Do you know? Uh, yeah, Um there's 
the obvious challenges that we just have in our society with gender roles, norms, biases. So just um, like Joanna described, being perceived as, or just even like unconscious, I guess, perceptions that men or people in general, including women, can have about um, ourselves and each other that um, women are highly emotional or <laughs> which is needed or in unreliable business. or these different um, biases that can impact um, how you're treated, how you're paid, and the respect that you garner to advance maybe to a more higher up position. There's just a lot of barriers just because of how our society has programmed gender inequality into us, which is changing. Yes. But those are like, I think, the basis of challenges. And then there's also bigger, um, more structural challenges like pay uh, transparency and Before we were discussing, like, there is a gender pay inequality, but one of the challenges within that is that women um, statistically have a harder time negotiating their pay. So it's not even just that they're not being paid more. It's that they don't feel they have the right to negotiate, whereas a man does, most likely. So that's a challenge, and that's more of an internal challenge that women are having because of... I guess that systematic treatment over time. And then lastly, I think um, being underrepresented in certain fields, such as like finance, um, just there's there's certain specific fields where it's maybe been statistically more challenging for women to break through. And that has also kind of played a role in the inequality. I want to add something to what Milan said about women being... Uh, not feeling like they could negotiate their pay. It's mostly also because of the way women are seen. You know, sometimes you will be seen as, oh, she's such a yeah. aggressive woman, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so a lot of women tend to stay quiet and try not to offend people. Whereas a, a man would go for what he wants to get. Yeah. You know, and it's like Milan said, mostly just the way society has been structured. I um I was reading the study that was published this month, and it talks about the differences of pressure and responsibilities that women and men focus on. And they say uh, the first one is focus on their responsibilities at home, only 35% of men and 48% of women. And support their family financially, 45% of men, 47% of women, which is, (laughs) I thought it would be the other way around, but... And uh, be successful in their job career, 36% of men and 39% of women. Oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I. It's hard to, I, I, I watched my mom take care of the entire household and go to school, to raise three kids, my grandmother the same, and the men went out to work every day. They I guess brought them the bacon, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But it what they did at home was business too. They handled the bills. They met with the school teachers. They were involved um, communally with everyone else. They usually met with other women throughout the day who were taking care of their own children. So there was an aspect of business that may not have looked, definitely did not look like what men were doing, but it's all Together, they complement each other. So watching my mom graduate at the top of her business class when I was, I guess, in elementary school, um, I've always seen my mother um, achieve great things. She's no longer here, but she read the business section of the Washington Post as long as I'd known her. And I would ask her certain things and to, you know, um, but I think that the emotional intelligence that we talked about, um, the intuition that we bring, we complement, we bring a certain aspect, just like Milan mentioned, saying that it may have looked at as a negative. It's, a, it's definitely a positive because men can be so structured and so focused in one area. It, it would take 
another personality to come in and say, have you considered this? Did you look at this? But the way the world has framed it for so long is as this, men have this and women don't have this. I haven't seen The Woman King yet. You that, need to. It's a really good movie, yeah. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I thought of, saying that the, just The Woman King as a title, her being the head of an entire um, nation of men and women, and being in leadership, that's just another. And Deborah in the Bible was another one where yeah. a man didn't want to take on the role. So the woman's like, okay, I'll do it. And she got rewarded for it. So I think that those barriers are um, being torn down to say that, to me, role does not equal value. Yeah. That's something that I've always considered. Role does not equal value. Everybody has a position to play. And um, may I ask? In South Africa and Africa, in the in the con- Central Africa, how does it differ? If you can share anything, the norms for women there and what you've seen in America, if you could add anything. Okay, so um, women are both valued and not valued. Okay, I'll, I'll give an example. Okay, so my mom, my mom is the head of. Uh, the Department of Health in the Army in my country. What? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, are you, wow. Yes. And um, growing up with my mom, I've seen my mom grow f- go from, you know, selling oil in the street to being where she is right now. Wow. And still facing a lot of challenges at work. You know, there were a lot of men who were not happy to see a woman go up in ranks and you know it's it's, incredible especially with the african pride men you know they see women as you need to stay at home you know you need to take care of the kids and even if you're working you cannot be making more than men Mm. you cannot go higher than men Mm. and when they see that i've seen my mom be attacked multiple times not physically okay but you know in tactics you know she has some plans she brings the plan and they just dismiss it it's you know but i've never seen her give up how long has may i ask how long has she held that position i think about three years now so yeah about three years she's always worked uh for as long as i've known her she's she started in the army in 2000, 2000? Yeah, in 2000. That's an incredible woman story, African story from selling oils to the position where she is now. Yeah. She has got mm-hmm. to write about that. That is such an inspiration. Yeah. I mean, if you Google her name, you will see. You know her. what? I'm just so mad right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, every single time, just to take a pause for the cause, every single time we do an episode, we found out, we find some (laughs) nugget of wonder in the staff here at Capital Workspaces. That's incredible. And we've talked so many times. That's incredible. Yeah. And um, she's taught me so much. And But like I was saying, she's valued. Yes. At the same time, she's not. Yeah. You know, and she's accomplished so much. Yeah. It sounds like an, um, I think because men were created as the providers, not saying that we're not providers, but since that it can be a little uh, insecure, it can be insecurity in men. I think that they can look like, look as if you're challenging them, but you're not challenging them. Mm -hmm. You're bringing something to the table and we just want room made for us at the table. There's a big enough table. All of us are included because when we talk about women's history, I'm raising, I raised sons. I still talk to them, of course, and they ask, I'm in advisory mode, but those of us who have children, we're raising sons and we're raising them to be in their mind to include women in their ideals about life Mm -hmm. so that moving forward from 2000 the 2000s on that they will not exclude intentionally exclude women from the story of business mm-hmm. that's in inver- and your mother Milan business owner entrepreneur um do you have any examples of what she may experience being so close with your mom 
Yeah, she's done a lot of work for um, women in the world, realms of international development. She had worked in uh, Egypt doing like refugee resettlement work, which definitely directly has dealt with women's inequality and just injustice in different parts of the world. Um, she's worked throughout the African diaspora, but really, yeah, I would say she has a lot of experience and just herself um, advancing and navigating that. May I ask, was that um, a private contract or was that government work or that was just personally her? And what that she was did? a private organization. She's worked with a few different private organizations and nonprofits. I forget the name of that one particularly, but Oh yeah. my goodness. The wealth of women work here and accomplishment just in the mothers and the women mm. sitting at the table. I don't, everything that I have done, I, I haven't really considered it. And I, and I, I don't want to harp on this too much, but the way that I think I never thought about it as being held back as a woman because living in the United States is always something trying to hold you back. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just moved to PG County. I grew up in, I grew up in DC, the hood, so to speak. Now I live in PG County. There's a different um, uh, class issues there, different um, salaries. Um, 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 uh, African-American women in a, mostly white American male dominated society. Now I work for a company. Most of the men there are black men. And so when I make a decision, I still think it's Michelle, if that makes sense. I don't look at it as, oh, you're just against women. You're just against me because I think of I I think about it as my idea versus your idea, what you want to do versus what I want to do. I kind of um, narrow it down to that because I can touch that. Because mm-hmm. if I had to look at it as a woman versus men, it's, oh my God, that would bring too many conversations that, you know, I would actually have to have proof and that, that could go to another rabbit hole, if you know what I'm saying. You're talking about things that you've accomplished. You, you don't really see how big everything you've accomplished is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. A lot of women do a lot of things, even just raising kids. You know, not everyone can raise kids. Oh. And this is one of the reasons why I say women in Africa are valued and also not valued. They're valued at home. Yeah. They're not valued in the workplace. Wow. Because raising kids, they Men value you for that in Africa. And it's not easy. You get people paying for nannies here. But then yeah, you also get people laughing time. at women who are housewives. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I don't thing. get it. It's, it's, I think it's because in America, it's a different culture, of course, than Africa. We here value work and the more money you can make, regardless of what it is. So if you're doing that in Africa, me, from, me just let me give you my perspective. Me seeing women in any video, any doc documentary women taking care of their children Africa I'm just like oh my god I wish I could stay home I wish I could have stayed home and take care of my children God did bless me where I could work part-time and sometimes I still maintain a home ownership and all that type of stuff but here in America it's all about it's five o'clock let me get up I gotta jump up and go get it I gotta rush through traffic I gotta take my kids to school I gotta make sure I talk to the teacher sometime through the day I gotta make sure I take care of my manager's position if I gotta cry I better go outside and do it in the bathroom when I come home and do this pick the kids up from school all as a single mother you know, so I, from my perspective, it's a different perspective from what I look at in other countries because it seems like in America, this it's just a different culture. I look at other countries that take, you know, siestas and some of the um, Hispanic people that do that still today. I'm just like, you're here and you're taking time out to rest. That's crazy to me because it's just the way you think because you're in this hamster wheel. I gotta, 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 gotta. So I, I think it's. Men, too, and women, too, we just express it in different ways. Men, and I'm not speaking for men. Let me just make sure I say this. <laughs> I want to take a pause. I'm not speaking for men. It's just my perception. We shared earlier how women, when we take maternity leaves and take off from work, we're concerned more about getting back to work than taking care of our health. Yeah, yeah. Men have to be literally forced mm-hmm 
to go take off to take care of their health. They have a, it's, maybe it's just the way they build. They look at taking off or being concerned that it's not as important. That's why when women come and say, no, you got to go take care of your health because your health is tied to your working. Mm-hmm. They don't look at it like that. They look at things like we talked about. Men think like waffles, compartmentalized. And women, we think of spaghetti. We can go through Roman number one, Roman number two, A's, um, B and C. We look at things differently than men. So I I just wanted to add that. I don't want to go off on a rant, but (laughs) just talking about what we add in this culture. But women's business, women's podcast, women as authors has skyrocketed. And uh, I'm not sure what else. Yeah, I'm just on that same point. There's some uh, definitely some thoughts on what women add to the workplace that I can touch on. Um, Diversity really in general is what can help us foster creativity and innovation in the workplace. So as we discussed earlier, like when we bring, whether it's women or people from different ethnic backgrounds or socioeconomic backgrounds, um, when we have different experiences and backgrounds in the same place, that helps to promote better collaboration and just growth of the business versus just having the same perspective in that space. Um, Which, yeah, as we're growing and progressing as a society, that's just important to create that space. Yeah. Um, as we kind of lightly touched on just the the skills that women naturally inherently bring into the workplace in the way of emotional intelligence competencies, I'll just share like one statistic from this article. Um, so it says a 2016 study published by the global consulting firm Hay Group found that women outperform men in 11 of 12 key emotional intelligence oh. competencies, including emotional self-awareness, empathy, conflict management, adaptability ability and teamwork. So this is just to highlight, um, we all have strengths and it's not to attribute one to other, like we can all have all of these strengths, but this is just an important reason to value as we're talking about valuing women for what they bring to the table. Um, these are effective leadership skills that aren't often attributed as important or valuable, but as we all learn and grow from especially American politics, we can see how certain qualities such as this can just benefit our society as a whole and businesses. So validating women and their emotional intelligence and what they bring to the workplace is definitely important. And then lastly, an important perspective of having women in business and women in leadership is the consumer insight that they bring to the table. So another statistic is women are 85% of consumer purchasers. So that to any business brings a great amount of perspective as far as trends. What are women interested in? How are women moving forward culture in different ways when it comes to different aspects of business? It's an important um, perspective to keep in mind. I was thinking about, um, I guess, when a husband and wife or whatever pairing of men and women are in a relationship together and they have to make consumer purchases together, like a vehicle or a home or a wedding. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking to me in the mindset, and I'm going to ask you, Joanna, I'm I'm thinking that the men give that the majority of that role over to the women as far as the decision making, like the choices. Um, not that they don't give any kind of input, but they do rely on, in, in my perspective, lean on what the woman thinks and how does she feel about this area? Are we going to raise children in this area? Um what do you want to share anything about that perspective and specifically about your wedding? Because it's notoriously they have bridezillas. I haven't heard of grooms. <laughs> groomzilla. <laughs> so um, I was thinking about that. When men do tend to, in certain areas, give uh, specific roles over to women that they feel that they may not be able to handle um, as well. So I don't really know. Personally, I'll say my husband is very hands on. And I think it's because he's close with his mom. He, Aww. you know, he's sometimes he sees things the way I see things. Okay. You know, and we do discuss things before making a decision or, you know, and sometimes I'll say, I just <laughs> let him think he's making the decisions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've heard that so much from women. He's the head, but I'm the neck that turns the head. Yes. I turn the head this <laughs> direction. So yeah, I I definitely do bring my input to the decisions we make. And um 
I really appreciate that he asked me for my opinion before doing anything. Okay. So I wouldn't say he's one of the men who would, oh, she'll make the decisions. She'll buy it. She'll do this. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. And we not going to leave out Andrew, who yes. gives kudos <laughs> to his wife, Jesse and his incredible mom, who have been so um, paramount in his um, in his life. So he did share that with us. He's he's um, here right now but he's you know staying low for the women see how much he loves us <laughs> he you. decided to say it off the yeah time. he said I'm gonna respect the women and then just you know stay, stay in the background but thank you this has um, been an incredible show I really have to say I really enjoy the relationships that I develop and the people that I meet, I love talking and meeting people. And the more and more opportunities I get to speak with you ladies, I'm just blown away about your from your talents and just your backgrounds and the women that cultivated the kind of women that you are. So I celebrate the both of you and thank you so very much with, to what you bring to Capital Workspaces and The Hub because we definitely could not do it without the two of you. Thank so you. thank you. Thank but you please much. talk to your mom about being interviewed. <laughs> I would love that. And I'm not sure if your mom's in the area as well. A lot. I would love to interview her as well. They would both be inspirations to my granddaughter, Alora, who's an mm-hmm. aspiring writer. But um, any woman that listens to this podcast would definitely be inspired from their stories of what they've dedicated to the world. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. thank you once again for joining us, ladies, Joanna and Gamala and Milan Shannon here at Capital Workspaces. We've been Enjoyed, thoroughly enjoy sharing with you Women's History Month, our perspective, and um, we'll see you or you'll hear from us on our next episode. Take care. <laughs>